Hey folks, it is Chad again here at Airstream of Greensboro here in North Carolina, the only Airstream dealer for the North Carolina area. I am here and back with another review and walk around of the 2023 Flying Cloud 25RB queen bed model. Now the rear bed model, which is what RB stands for, is not really the more popular of the four plans. Really the, the front bed, the 25 front bed and the 27 front bed, tend to be the more popular floor planes. Now, the question I want to ask today is, should the RB be the less popular floor plane or should it really be the more popular floor plane? I'm not sure, but let's jump into it and find out. Now, we're going to start, obviously, at the front on the walk around of the outside. It is a beautiful April day here in North Carolina, but we do get that pollen season here in the south. Now, as we start this walk around, I want to mention that Airstream of Greensboro, we are part of the largest dealer group for Airstream. And that simply means, one, we sell more Airstreams than any other dealer group in the world when it comes to travel trailer sales. Now, for you, what does that mean? How does that benefit you? Well, that just really means that, one, I can get pretty much any Airstream that you might be looking for in a, in a pretty good amount of time, maybe within a week and maybe within a few months. The other thing is I'm going to get you the best pricing and I'm going to get you the most for your trade. So if you're interested in uh, trading or buying an airstream feel free to reach out all my contact is down in the description below now starting with the front you're gonna have standard with the flying cloud your solar guards and then your stainless steel rock guards you're gonna have 30 pound propane tanks here double tanks it does have the auto transfer over uh, that you could do there you're gonna have a power ton jack with a little level level bubble on it and uh, the light there. Then you also have the Demco Easy Hitching System. Now this, will it's basically on a spring system. So when you set the camper down on the ball, you don't actually have, have to have this open. Once it clamps down, it's down. Now as far as unhitching, you do pull that up to unhitch and you can pop that down. Now on this side, you're gonna have the propane uh, quick connect for things like uh, a heater, like a little propane heater, or more so probably for uh, a little propane grill that you might want to use on the outside. And then on the other side of the battery box, just down uh, right there, is going to be a spot to be able to plug in an additional solar uh, suitcase style solar panel that has a charge controller on it. That's going to plug directly into the battery, so you'll want to have uh, that charge controller with it. Hey folks, just cutting in really quick in the video and I wanted to show where the spare tire is, which is right here is kind of the mechanics part of it. And the spare tire is stored right there. You're also going to see deployed uh, your manual stabilizers. You do get one on each corner, so a total of four. They're manual. Now you can easily turn that into a powered stabilizer just with a drill and a bit. Uh, yep, spare tire there and stabilizer right there. Uh, now with this, the solar guards, you saw me, saw me open this. I'm going to go inside real quick and open this window just so you can see how that works. This window, to open this window, you've got to first open the solar guard. Now there, that's the window open. It will open basically near 90 degrees out. You can get a ton of breeze through the front. There is a uh, mosquito. You know, sometimes when I'm making these videos, I forget what things are called. Um screen the little buck screen those are built in to each of the windows that open uh, this glass here uh, airstream orders that in the frames themselves airstream is actually making those frames in-house with the airstream artisans and something really cool uh, the airstream does they actually hand cut these windows out so the, it'll be kind of rough cut uh, smaller a smaller hole than the window needs and then there's two gentlemen one, the kind of main guy has been cutting these windows out for 20 plus, plus years. We'll actually use hand shears and hand cut these windows out so that those windows fit perfect to each camper. So it's kind of a neat thing that Airstream does that you don't see a lot with uh, kind of traditional, well, really anything, especially in the RV market out there, that you're going to see so much that's actually hand built and uh, quality materials that you'll see. And that's going to be one of the extruded aluminum framing. The seals, all of that's going to be kind of high quality, more so than what you might be used to if you're coming from a traditional camper to an Airstream camper. So that's the window system. And of course, to close all of this, you're going to go back to the inside and then put that down. I'll do that real quick. And that is now closed. 
And then as far as putting this down, that'll be the repeat of what I did at the beginning of the front here. And as I put this down, I'm gonna move to the campsite side of the Airstream. Now starting with the campsite side, I'm gonna kind of talk about the door. Now with the rear bed, the bed is gonna be in the back of the coach. The front of the coach is gonna be your living space. So dinette and couch going across there and kitchen right here. That's also putting the door towards the front of the campsite. So depending on where you're camping, uh, you know, about 10% or so of campgrounds will have what I call premium spots, spots that you're gonna back up to and you know, it looks out over the ocean or it looks out over the mountain scene and you want the living space at the back of the coach um, to be able to see that. Most of your other spots, the other 90 or so percent of your spots are gonna be inside the campground where you're backing kind of back to back or butt end to butt end with your campers. And what that's gonna do with this particular setup, the rear bed setup is your camp, your road side is gonna be up where your dinette is and your living space where you're gonna spend most of your daytime. And then nighttime, you're in the back of the coach back where the other camper is gonna be that you're kind of up against depending on the campsite. So that's kind of why you, you might pick a, a rear bed versus a front bed. Now with this setup here, you've got the door here. I do like to talk about the door. It takes them about eight hours to build this door. They build it by hand. Um, you've got six welds on your, your screen door here, six, three on both sides or six on both sides. Um, now you'd always want to kind of pull these back together before you shut the door. It can kind of de-warp this uh, screen door a little bit, but something I always like to do is shut the door. Uh, it shows quality. You could hear it and the sound of the door shutting. We call it the vault door of the RV industry. Now remember to always pull your keys out because if you open the door with the keys in there, it will put a dent there. Now, as far as the steps here, you get questions about steps. Now, actually, when I first started, I had to go watch a video when I first started selling Airstreams on how to uh, put the steps away and pull the steps out. So basically, as far as the steps go, you're just going to push these in. This fold, that bottom step is going to fold up. You can actually leave it in this setup and step right there. They do that on purpose. And then to put the step away, you're going to grab underneath here, pull out, and then push in. And it's all kind of one motion. So I'll show you that here. And you just kind of push up and it locks right into place. One motion, pull out and then push in. Now, as far as deploying the steps, that's also fairly easy. You can do it with your shoe. You just pull up there. I'm not going to do it because I've got nice dress shoes on and I've already cut this shoe up doing that. So you're just going to pull this lever up. It'll swing out. Now I like to push down just to make sure that step has fully connected. And then you're just going to basically kind of push up, swing that out. And now the steps are deployed. Very simple. It's not power step, but it is a reliable manual step that will work for the life, the life of the coach. That's aluminum. So very nice step. Now you do have a furnace here. And I joked in another video that I did of a rear bed model. It was international. Uh, if you're interested in that, I'll, po I'll pop a card up above that you can click on. But I talked about the uh, furnace being right here with the door opening in front of it. And uh, a very wise uh perspective buyer or airstream lover commented that if it's really cold outside you're probably not going to leave the door open so this running is not going to be that big of a deal but uh furnace is right there you do have an outside 110 plug right there and then right here you're going to find your potable water fill or your fresh water that's gravity fed you've got your goodyear double axle system here now this is a dexter axle some of the best axles in the industry uh, now the way those are basically going to work it's like a tension rod system and it uses rubber there's no leaf springs or anything under there you do have some damper shocks to help with the ride and i will say if you've never driven you've never towed an airstream but you have towed traditional rvs they don't tow anywhere near the same this tow is incredible really lo low center of gravity uh, with the dexter axles it tracks just right behind uh, your truck on your tires goodyear endurance or st270 or 225s 75 r 15s is the tire that goes on to the flying cloud and you're pretty much going to see this on all your airstream except for the classic now you also are going to have the dexter uh, brakes that are auto adjusting so you don't have to adjust them over the lifetime of using them and you're also going to have never lube uh, bearings from Dexter as well that are installed. Those will last about four or five years before you need to do anything with them and you're basically just going to replace them at that point. Now the rest of the coach, you're coming down to the bedroom area. This is one of the windows that goes into the bed area, bedroom area. That window does open. 
And then basically you just have the flying cloud emblem. And on this side, that's about it as far as um, the campsite side of the RV goes. Now with the manual zip the awning, as far as difficulty, it's really not that difficult to deploy this awning. Now, it, yes, it's more difficult than the powered zip the awning, but the plus with the manual is there's no electronics. There's no motors, there's no power, there's nothing running to it. It's all manual. Uh, it's very unlikely to break over the lifetime of ownership. Uh, now, as far as the biggest trick that I will tell you is if you can carry a one or two step little step stool with you, that makes the deployment of the awning much quicker and easier. You're going to have two travel locks. We actually have three travel locks, but uh, the first one's going to be right there in that corner. Then you have the same thing on the back corner. And then right towards the back corner, there's actually a little hook that hooks into place to kind of hold the awning against the coach as you're traveling. Now, this one here is very easy to get to because I can open the door, simply step up here and pull that off, unscrew it and pull it off. The one on the back is going to be a little bit difficult to get to unless you have a step stool and you just get up there. So what you're going to use is your awning tool arm to get up to that one. And then the main travel lock, and this is the lock that I would use when I'm actually camping. So once I, I'm finished, you know, I want to put the awning away, whether it gets you know windy or it starts to rain or I'm just leaving the campsite. And remember, always put your awning away when you leave the campsite. Never leave the campsite with the awning deployed. That's the lock I'm going to use uh, when I'm finished putting the awning up, but I'm not leaving. So I'll just lock that one back down. And theoretically, you probably don't have to do anything, but I at least recommend that. When you go to leave camp and to head back home, that's when you want to put the travel locks back in place and lock those down uh, real good, okay? All right, so we're going to move back a little bit so you can see me pull the actual awning out. Now from here, you're gonna just use your awning arm. I always like to close this door. Uh, you can open it with the door open. I, I've done that a couple of times and not had a problem, but I do like to close the door. You're gonna grab the strap here using your awning arm and then just pull it out until you can reach the strap. And then from there, you don't actually need the arm anymore. So you can just throw that down kind of out of the way. And then from here, you're going to basically grab underneath here. So it's spring loaded, it wants to go back up. So from here, you want to grab the fabric and hold on to it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk down until I get to that side and then I'll lock it in place. Now, kind of a, a pro trip uh, tip is one, go ahead and fold this up. So I basically kind of half it and then half it again. And then from here, I can fold it to here. And then there's a little strap that this will tuck into. Tucks in just like so you tuck that right in there and then this will hang out of the way like so now i like to once i get the awning out uh, tim maxwell our airstream rep for the east coast gave me this secret and that is from this point you basically just want to stay inside under the awning so from here i can walk down and get to this point and from here i'm going to still hold on to uh, the fabric to keep the arm down and i can actually move over and just hold the arm down I'm going to pick up the first support arm and it is going to come in right there and it kind of there's a little spot you can kind of see between the outer arm and the actual tube that this will sit in and from here you're going to push down and it's going to lock this into place uh, so that the awning stays out and I'll do that and basically there's a little acorn I'm going to put my hands here and the biggest thing I can tell you is don't be afraid that you're going to break it. It does take a little bit of force to, to deploy or to get this to lock in place. And I'll show you. So it's locked in place. And if you feel it, you don't have the strength to do it from the inside. You can come to this side and kind of hold on to it like this and then use your body weight uh, to pull it back. Uh, basically, basically, you're just locking it into place. You'll feel a little bit of a spring there that locks it in place. Now, what we're going to do is go to the other side and do the same thing. Now, walking to the other side, you know, this lock, it's locked in on the front right so it's not going to go up but i do like to kind of once i get over here and i'll keep a hand on this as i walk now as far as putting this side up same thing as that side you're going to grab onto this at this point it's unlocked so you can you know, shorten it and lengthen it and there's a little little spot here as i mentioned over there that's going to set in place you want to make sure that's fully looped around or hooked around that arm and then again i'm just going to take i'm going to put one kind of one finger around that acorn nut and then from here just push down and it's in place 
the first couple of times you do it, it's going to feel weird. But after you've done it a few times, um, it's really simple at that point. Uh, it, it becomes much easier, I guess, because you kind of know what to expect. So from here, there's also a little uh, lever that pulls out. And this has multiple points where it can pop into place uh, for different varying heights. There's basically three heights. You want to start with going to the second height on this side and then move to the other side to go to the third point and then you can come back and raise this one. Now with this being the back of the coach, I'm going to leave it at the second uh, spot and then open that side to the third spot. That way the awning is tilting to this side a little bit and if I do get a small rain, the rain's just going to run off this side. So what I'll do is I'm going to take one hand right here. I'm going to use my right hand. I'm going to put left hand here, right hand here. I'm going to unhook this and it's not going to go any anywhere unhook it and then holding it out i'm just going to push it up until i lock into place now i'm in the second spot so that is home there that's the first spot that's the second spot and then there's another one about right there let's roll around to the other side and we'll go up three okay now as i walk to this side they're locked in place so i don't have to hold anything um, on this side i'm going to go to the third position because i'm already on the second pos position there what that will do is tilt the awning towards that back side. So any water that you might get, rain, you know, light rain will go off that side and not this side. And more importantly, it won't uh, kind of collect in the middle of the awning, which will ultimately break the awning. So on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing I did there, but I'm gonna go all the way up, pull that first, and I'm gonna hold it out, go all the way up, and now I can go past that third position. Actually, we went past it, but, uh, once you get about that distance, you can just let this go. If you go past it, do what I just did there, let go and then bring it back down a little bit. So that's the awning deployed. This side is slightly higher than that side. And if it's the front bed model, so the bed is up here, the entrance door is there in the back, I would do the reverse of that. So this side would be lower, that side would be higher. Now, as far as putting the awning away, it's simply the reverse of that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower this arm. I'll lower this one all the way back to home. Now I'll go back to that side and lower it uh, to home and then basically put the awning away. So let's start here. So the trick here is to use the resistance of this inner arm against the outer arm. And what basically what that's going to do is it takes the weight of the awning off of me and puts it into, I don't know, engineering, whatever that would be, science maybe. So I'm going to lift up here and from here I'm going to use you know a finger or, or a hand. So I'm lifting with the right hand pull that out and then from there I can start to lower it now you can see that as long as I keep a little bit of resistance a little bit of pressure against the awning I can control how fast the awning comes down and then it locks right into place at the home position I'll do that again so on the third one and I can really do it with one hand I was doing it with two hands just to kind of make sure I was keeping control actually let me move the camera kind of facing this way There we go. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to just use my, just pull up on it a little bit and I can let that out. So now I'm using the resistance of this inner arm against the outer arm to lower the awning in a very controlled and safe manner. And right there I can let go. So now I'm going to that home position and it's locked in place in the home position. Now, right here, the next thing I'm going to do is put this upper arm away. There is a pull tab here and that's gonna release the tension that's on this, that's keeping this out uh, and helping keep the awning in the right shape. So I pull that down and that's just gonna release. There's not much else that I do from there. And I can lift this up and kind of shrink it up a little bit. And then there's a spot right here for where this is gonna set down. And that's where it was when you first deployed it. So you're just returning it back there. That's its home position for when you're traveling and you've got the awning put away. So from here, we're gonna go back to the other side and lower it and do the same thing with its arm. Now, moving back to, to this side, to the back, same thing as I did over there. So I'm gonna use tension to bring this down to that point there. So now it's back in home. I'm going to release this. Now from here, I wanna keep one hand right here. I'm gonna keep my left hand here because I'm right-handed. And that's to hold this arm, hold the awning out and deployed. So from there, I'll bring this up and it's gonna sit right there into home, back into home. And then from here, I'm gonna grab onto that fabric just like I did before. 
and walk back to the middle. Release this, let it fall down. And now I can hold on to this so I can reach down and pick up my awning arm. And from here, I can just slowly let the awning back into place. And I'll attach it there and let it right up into place. It's that easy. And then from this position, if you were staying at the campsite, that's a fairly loud truck there. If you're staying at the campsite, you're not, you know, you're not leaving. You can pretty much leave it there. But if you wanted to just to be safe, I've already got the awning arm in my hand. I could just lock that back in place. And now the awning is, is technically locked in place. It's not gonna you know, pop out even though it really wouldn't because the springs that are in the arm is really holding it against the coach. Uh, so this is all you need to do as far as the campsite. You know, we've got a few more days left. Now, if I'm leaving, I'm, if I'm leaving the campsite, now I want to put the travel locks back into place. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, putting the travel lock in place, it, it's not too difficult, but it would be easier if I had a step stool and I could reach it. But if I don't, I can still do it. So I'm going to press down, kind of level these out a little bit so I can throw that back up there. Oh, there we go. And then same thing as before, I want to have the arm about three quarters of the way up so I can kind of have more control of it. And then same thing, I'm just gonna kind of work it around. Until it's in place. And this is real time, you know, I'm not fast forward or anything. Oh, went the wrong way. and that's locked in place that's it now travel locks the center travel lock i've already got in place so i'm going to walk over and do the front travel lock now so moving to the front side you're going to see how much easier it is so uh, you know if you have a step stool that is definitely the way to go so now that's locked in place it's safe for you to drive down the road uh, this will not come out it's tied against the coach it's locked in place three different locks to hold this awning so very safe now the first probably five times that you use this awning you're gonna think what did i do to myself why did i buy this manual awning this coach with this manual awning on by the tenth time you're gonna think no oh, it's not that bad it's really not okay you know i'm getting the hang of it i understand it by the 15th or so time by that point you're going to be very happy with your purchase you're going to be glad you have it it's easy to use you know how to, to use it there's an airplane flying above um, and you'll, you'll be happy about it because it's a manual only it's kind of the true what RVing is meant to be you know it's not meant to be just glamping there's there's supposed to be some rough in it even though you're in air, a luxury airstream there's still some rough in it too with this only and that's one of the things i like about it about the manual awning and it's mechanical there's nothing electronic that can break there's no motors to wear out over time this is something that's going to last last the lifetime of the coach now moving around to the back side of the coach uh, the airstream flying cloud this window does open here you do have a nice window awning that pulls out this is going to have these little arms that flip around and they kind of set in place you'll do that on both sides now this will fold up there's a piece of velcro right there that will velcro up so this is out of the way and then when you put this away it's going to swing up and over and then it will actually set just behind this acorn nut that's right here and that's kind of where it will set while you're traveling and it really does uh set in place fairly well right there so this window opens here you've got your license plate mount with the light on it you are going to have a little bit of wet storage here in the back with a nice little locking arm right there now you can push this down and bend that arm so be careful kind of remembering that you do need to unlock this arm and as far as unlocking it you're just going to kind of press up a little bit i just use my uh kind of arm there in my hand and then just lift up and from there it will fold down and then press this back down into place backup cam camera is standard it's going to come with a little monitor that's a wireless monitor that fits inside your truck with a little 12 volt uh, power adapter that just plugs right into your cigarette lighter and that's how you can see the backup camera very useful thing that's standard uh definitely want that on every camper and i love the airstream includes that your backup lights are going to be led you're going to see kind of signature lights uh on each airstream depending on the model so this is what you're going to get on the flying cloud and remember this is the bedroom area so this big window uh, is 
in, in conjunction with the bed there. And I'll show you on the inside what that actually looks like. Let's move to the non-camp side. So we're now on the kind of business side of the Airstream, uh, the Flying Cloud. This is a uh, two AC units, so 25 foot. So it was ordered with two ACs. So you're gonna have a 50 amp plug that's plugged in there. It is a smart plug. Your main storage is gonna be for outside. It's gonna be right here in the front. And it does open. This is a, this is a fairly large exterior storage. Um, like it goes back a good two or three feet. It even comes back to, to this section here as well. There's a light in there that I turned on. Uh, you do have some cables here. I've not really noticed these getting in the way because they're so close to the frame. They're not really sticking out that far, but just something to know about. And then you'll also notice with this, um, turn that light off, with the latching system that Airstream uses, you're actually gonna have to push in a little bit and then turn around. But when, I, when you press this down, it's actually um, compressing that inner seal to really make a tight seal with this outside door and the seal on the inside to make that, that compartment fairly waterproof. Now, I'm not sure how well you can hear it, but the outside, the ACs are actually running right now and I can hear it. I'm not sure if you can hear it on here. It's definitely audible, but they're gonna be quite a bit quieter on the inside and you'll get to hear that at least over the mic once we get to the inside. Now you have your on-demand hot water here, a uh, heater right here, uh, no tank, it's on-demand, so it's tankless. Uh, that's a Gerard on, uh, water heater if you're wondering. You do have the outside shower, it's hot and cold water. You're gonna have your city water fill here that has the, uh, water, the water pressure regulator built into it. So you don't need to add one uh, to this coach, it's already built in. In fact, if you do add it uh, on the outside, it could reduce the pressure so much that the hot water heater doesn't kick on. Black tank flush is here, very nice thing, that's standard. You definitely want a black tank flush. And then on uh, your plug, it is the smart plug. It's a fantastic plug. It's very easy to unplug and easy to plug in. I would unplug it, but the AC is running. I don't want to mess anything up as far as electronics go. And then this cap sets down to lock this in place as well. But as far as opening this, you're just going to squeeze these triggers in and pull it out. And putting it in just snaps right into place. Very easy to use. Above that, you're going to have your campsite, satellite, and cable inputs that will go to your TVs on the inside. And then you have a little bit more storage up here at the front that kind of goes probably here to about right there. Uh, so, so really two nice storage storage spots on the 25 RB. I'm kind of behind the tree now. Let me pull the camera around. Uh, but two really nice camp spots on the 25 RB for storage. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, this does have the two ACs. It also has the solar, total of 300 watts of solar. You can see that, see that up there. And then Airstream also paints that aluminum roof in a white color to help reflect off any solar rays uh, and reduce uh, heat that transfers uh, throughout the coach. Something else I wanted to mention while I've got you, and these ribs right here, um, they actually add tape between the inside structure and this outer aluminum piece. It's a thermal blocker to help keep uh, the outside temperature from transferring through that metal to the inside. So you've got a piece of foam, it's a sticky foam that separates uh, that metal from this outer shell and gives you a thermal barrier inside the coach. And then Airstream is also using a product called EcoBat for the insulation uh, in those walls. All the way around, you've got a full batten insulation through a product called EcoBat. And one of the things you'll notice when you go into Airstream is you don't get that off gassing that you get with a lot of other RVs. And that's something that Airstream is specifically trying to accomplish with glues that don't have any off gassing products in them. I pop into the video one more time. I kind of missed this, but your, your tank dumps are right here. Gray tank and black tank. They also give you a little, uh, storage for your stinky hose is right there it's always a good it's always good to have a spot to be able to put your uh, sewer hose when you're finished but right there gray tank and black tank you actually see the tanks uh, back in there there is a there's a metal protected uh, underbelly kind of under there and you can see also the hole underneath of this coach is also aluminum it's a full aluminum wrap which is really nice so the last part of the business side or non camp side of the coach is this front section. So you have one more storage compartment there. You've got one more window that's gonna open 
the kind of couch area is right there on the inside. Now there's a good bit of storage in here uh, from this front section. I will, I will say I think that the rear bed has a good amount of storage, maybe even more storage than uh, the FB version of the 25 foot. This storage here is going to go from about right there to about right there. So, I mean, that's a good bit of storage and it goes in, you know, almost, I mean, almost arm deep. So it's going in about to there. So a good amount of storage. You've got that very large storage compartment there in the back and then another fairly large storage compartment here in the front. Now, as far as the window awning on this side, it does have a travel lock. I'm going to pull the camera around so you can see me undo that. Now, this arm travel lock is on this side. Very similar to the front. If you're tall enough, you may be able to even reach up there and grab it and just open it with your hands. I'm not tall enough to do that, but I am tall enough to grab the strap here. So I don't even need the awning arm once I'm in kind of camp mode. And then this is going to pull down, locks into place right there. And you have your awning, your window awning that's going to really cover this whole side of the coach. And the nice thing about this awning, uh, window awning is it does provide a pretty good amount of solar um coverage from the sun so the sun's on the other side of the coach right now but if it was on this side and i had this out on a really hot sunny day it's going to reduce the amount of solar heat that's entering the side of the camper because you're shading that from the sun so kind of a nice feature there from here we're going to jump to the inside and start the inside walk around now starting the the inside walk around portion of uh, this flying cloud 25 rb walk around review uh, we do have the dinette section here. Now, one of the things I do like about the RB, as I mentioned, you've got all of these windows that are going to be facing out from the campsite. Uh, you've got a nice dinette. Now, this dinette does fold down and makes into a bed, and I'll show you that in a second. There's also a pull out here on that couch. Now, we'll give you another kind of small twin bed, uh, but good spacing. You could definitely fit four people here. There's plenty of room for that, or you know, two people as well. This, this coach sleeps six, depending on the size of the person. You've got a light here over the center, it's LED light, and then you also have nice reading lights that you can cut on and off. There's JL audio speakers uh, right here, and then additional two sets up on the bedside area. Now with your cabinets here, you're gonna have the really nice soft closed cabinets. So there's no lights on the inside here. Uh, the next step up is gonna give you that, which would be the international. You do have soft close uh, door hinges for all of your cabinets, which is really nice. Um, something I didn't want to mention, the AC is actually running right now, both ACs. And I don't think you, I can barely hear it. I don't think you're going to be able to hear it on the microphone. But with the um, air conditioned ducted system that air, the Airstream has, uh, it's a fantastic system. It's a true ducted system. There's actual duct work up there. And your inlet is also ducted and goes back. Uh, there's it kind of turns, it goes back and then turns back up to create a much quieter system. I think it runs around 20 to 30 percent, 30 percent quieter than your traditional RV system. Uh, you are going to have some storage underneath on this side, battery box there, and then storage underneath uh, that couch setting session <laughs> section. Remember, sometimes I forget how to talk. Uh, that section there. Now you're not going to have the Blu-ray or DVD player in any of the 2023 model year airstreams they they discontinued that for that particular year but you do have an hdmi uh, port here as well as a um in inducted in <laughs> inducted inverted <laughs> i can't talk today inverted plug right there and then i also think this is where the air connected system would go uh, just based off of the port that they put back there if you decided to add that, it's pre-wired for the air connected system, so you can have that. Uh, and then you also have a USB port there as well. You've got your JL audio, um, and that will happen sometimes. This will pop off. It just snaps right back in place. And if you uh, squeeze too hard on this, it, that will pop off. But JL audio receiver has AM, FM, USB, um, Bluetooth, and there's also an aux port that you can get to. Uh, mostly, you're probably just going to use Bluetooth to, to play over that. It does come with a subwoofer. It's the best sounding speaker system I've ever heard in an RV. Uh, hands down, the best sounding speaker system that I've ever heard in an RV. Uh, JL Audio with JL Audio speakers. 
Uh, your awning light, I didn't mention it does have an LED strip that runs across. That is there with a dimmer port or a dimmer function. Your ceiling light is there. And then there's a little step light that's outside. And that switch is right there. And then just below that, it's going to be uh, your battery disconnect, which that's literally a disconnect. It, you know, there's no batteries on the coach right now. If I hit that button, it's going to even disconnect the shore power from the coach as well. So it just completely kills all the power. But if you're storing it, you'll want to click that off. It's a remote remote solenoid that will click off. Let me put the bed down so you can see what that looks like in the bed, uh, the bed setting. And I'll do both sides on that. So I like to move these out of the way. That allows me to be able to pick this up and move it kind of out of the way, this bottom cushion. I do that mainly just because I don't want to take the chance of scarring or cutting the cushions. And then from here, I can just pick up and there's a little lever, a little switch there that folds into place. And then from there, you're basically just unlatching it from its little spot. Those go down into space place and the cushions can go back into their spot there you go and then these outer cushions are what goes in place right here and then right there now these these little supports that make the backrest come out far enough they can slide right there so that they're out of the way. Now you've got this bed here. I made that one. Now this one, if you want to make this one as well, um, you know, you could fit definitely a, an adult across here. I'll kind of, I'm 5'10 and I'll lay down so you can kind of see. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of room here. If I go all the way to this side, so my feet are touching that side, you know, I can't even reach there. So you could be a fairly tall person and sleep in this section. And there is enough room to sleep to adults there. You're going to be fairly cozy. But if you have somebody sleeping here, the person sleeping on this section can sleep to this side, which gives room for their feet of the person sleeping on this side to sleep that way. Now, as far as deploying this, this section, there's a little pullout right there. And then we'll pull this away. And I like to pull these out. And then put these cushions right there. And then this cushion will go right there. Like so. And then this again just stores underneath. So now you've got this whole section that can be a bed for the flying cloud. And again, tons of room for sleeping. And if I go all the way to where my feet are touching the wall, again, a ton of space here. So plenty of room for the, um, the bed setting here as far as how many kids can sleep here, how many adults can sleep here. Well, you can sleep a few. They say six and I would confirm that. How much can this hold? Well, I weigh about 270 and it's holding me. So that's, th that's that. I think if I remember correctly, Airstream told me that if it isn't, uh, if it's not stickered and labeled, then it can hold at least 350 pounds. That goes back into place. And then this goes back up. And there's a little, little clips there that just help to hold this in place. And put that right there and put that one right there. And now that section, that's back in place. Uh, and same thing with putting this back up. Um, you're just going to do the reverse uh, of what I did to take it down. I'm going to kind of switch over to the handheld version for the remainder of the inside. Uh, walk around. It's a little bit easier to do it that way uh, with just me on the camera. So let's jump around and I'll show you the kitchen area and we'll move on past. Okay, so starting kind of in the kitchen area with the 25, you do have a really nice kitchen. It kind of st sticks out a little bit here. Uh, there's not any storage on this side. You do have an additional plug right there. 
as well as a plug for power uh, there on the back wall. Uh, good storage underneath. Of course, you're going to have your trash can right there that you always get with Airstream. And that pulls out a lot of good storage underneath and above. Remember, the furnace is back behind there. And with the flying cloud, you're going to have the Formica countertop with the surface mounted stainless steel sink, a very nice large um, square sink there. And then the really nice residential faucet that does pull out and has the kind of the shower function as well as like the just the, the tube of water. I do like the really nice port windows that they give you behind the, the sink there so that when you are washing dishes, uh, you can see right out onto the campsite. You also have some hooks here to hang your keys. Uh, you could hang jackets there, but I don't think I would do that. Um, good storage above. Again, you're going to have that soft close uh, hinges. Remember, these hinges, the only other time you're going to see these used is going to be on the Classic. So the Flying Cloud and the Classic get these really nice soft close hinges. Uh, good, good deep um, storage there. It does curve down, so something to know. That is just natural with the Airstream. Um, and there's a good lip here to help keep anything from sliding out as you're going down the road. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you've got your inlets there for your AC. That's the inlet. And then your out is going to come there. Or I guess that would be the return. And then that's where it blows out. Really nice sunroof uh, option there that's in the kitchen area. So you get some good sun. And it does have a shade. So you can close that if you want to. And there's also a fantastic fan right here as well. So when you are cooking, you can kick that fan on and there is a fan right here over the stove that will exhaust out. And it's a good size uh, system. I mean, like this is, that's a good size uh, vent there. And of course it has a light above. You're going to have your solar charge controller there, your inverter, which is a standard 1000 watt inverter, that power circuit that I talked about. And then you have your sea level uh, monitor system that will give you percentage on battery first water gray and black and then your water pump switch is right there if you're wondering where that is uh, this does have a bluetooth app that you can see and control various things with the solar charge controller now that is a mppt controller on um, as far as storage goes you have really nice full extension drawers of course you get the the wood cuttery organizer there more storage right there more storage there and then there's a little bit of storage there. And if you're wondering, Chad, why is that so small? Well, it's small because some of the components like your tires are actually setting up behind because this is very low to the ground. Uh, it has a very low center of gravity, but Airstream still wants to give you as much storage uh, options as possible. Then you're gonna have the three burner stovetop right here. Three burners, you got a little bit of a splash guard there. This is also gonna have the lights that will light up around uh, the knobs there and then you have the optional convection microwave so this is a convection oven it's also a regular microwave it's a air fryer and it can also dehydrate uh you know you can make bacon or i guess not bacon but beef jerky while you're on the road traveling if you want to do that but that's an option there that you can get if you don't get this then you'll have a traditional propane oven right there and on the other side of the kitchen area again you'll have a little bit of storage right here um, again there's not a uh, there's not anything to hold this up that is something i wish airstream would start doing i think it's something you could easily add yourself if you wanted to and that's going to be a good bit of storage um, above the refrigerator area i think this is an eight cubic foot refrigerator if i remember correctly but it is a 12 volt fridge so there's no fins up here at the top you get all of that space for storage and then you have a really nice size refrigerator that will actually freeze your ice cream as well. And then a small little compartment. I call that the cereal box compartment. You could probably fit two cereal boxes in there. And then you're going to have the really nice pullout uh, pantry. These can be uh, adjusted to whatever spacing that you would like to have as far as the pantry goes. You give you kind of a nicer view of that. So really nice pantry option. Uh, I love it when Airstream is able to include that. And then from here, we'll move kind of to the middle. This is going to be your main wardrobe. Flip the light on. So storage above. And then you've got a nice deep wardrobe closet there, um, which will be enough for my wife. And then I probably will not have peeing clothes with, it, with me. The bathroom area on the RB is really nice. I think it gives you a much larger bathroom than what you get 
I shouldn't say much larger, but it gives you a larger bathroom than what you see on the FB version of the Flying Cloud. So we'll have some storage, really nice storage underneath, right then underneath the sink. It is gonna be a really cute little surface mounted stainless steel round sink. You've got a towel holder, you've got a makeup mirror. You have a really nice port window, very large port window that can with a pull down shade. You've got storage up here and there is a little lip right there to hold things up there. You've got really nice lighting here, actually four lights. You've got a little fantastic small fan and there is, if you're wondering, vents on inside here for air conditioning and for the heat pump. Um, I didn't mention that, but that AC does have a heat pump in both ACs. And then you've got additional storage right there where your toilet paper holder is gonna be. And then a little sliding doors for storage right there. And then an additional compartment, kind of medicine cabinet style compartment there. So fantastic storage. Um, with the RB, your on-demand hot water heater is right here as far as the controls go. That's your light switch, and then of course you have power in here. You're just gonna set this to the temperature that you wanna take a shower in, and then just turn the hot on. Don't try to mix this, because that won't work. Now it's gonna give you an error right now, and that's just simply because we don't have any propane running to it. It automatically goes to the on position when, once it receives power. Um, so it's basically always on. Now as far as the commode goes, it is a porcelain commode. Um, it's a gravity fed system, so not a macerator. You're not going to have anything like that on a flying cloud. Uh, good room in here. I'm just going to sit down. Let's see here. So as far as spacing goes, um, you can actually shut the door like there is... Oh, hold on. There we go. Hopefully you can see. But I've got a ton of room. Uh, my knees are not hitting the door or this inside cabinet. The only thing I would mention is from this perspective, getting to the toilet paper, there's not really a way to do that. So you want to open this first and then kind of have it open. I guess you can kind of maneuver around to open that, but that's just something to know about. Other than that, really good spacing, a very nice size bathroom for the 25 foot um, flying cloud and that's something i'll mention i think the 25 foot rb is going to give you a nicer bathroom the 25 foot fb is going to give you more storage kind of in the kitchen area um mainly in the kind of the kitchen area so something to think about something to kind of look at i think i do have a 25 foot front bed video if i do i'll link that above so you can check that video out and then as far as the shower of course that's a split bath the showers on this side another fantastic little tiny bit there it does have the really nice shower head with the on and off button and a little pull across string again that's not going to be something you can hang towels on but something like bathing suits works really good you have your controls for your hot and cold water you have a really nice large seat right there and that's something that i like to always mention if you're too tall for the size shower that we get in airstreams there is usually a seat so you can always use the seat when taking a shower meaning you can sit down so at 510 probably 511 with shoes on i've got a good about a couple of inches there of space i had someone yesterday in a 23 foot he was six three or four and felt like he could take a shower just fine so it's i think it's preference it's kind of up to you to what you feel like you can do now let me take a seat as well just so you can see how much room there is and i mean i've got plenty of room around me i can turn turn around i can definitely use the shower head so plenty of room for a shower this is not a big diesel motorhome shower it's not the 33 foot classic shower but it is sufficient for going on an rv journey in your airstream so let's move to the bedroom area this switch right here is for your uh shower light and then moving into the bedroom in the um, 25 foot rb you've got the fantastic panoramic windows that go all the way around these boxes just have your goodies that come with the coach things like your pillows uh your comforter is all stored in there there's a little goodie box right there as well now the bed here is the same size queen bed all the way up the flying cloud model the flying cloud lineup 
Now, one thing that I do like about this bed, let me see if I can turn the camera around. There is on the RB a good amount of space to be able to walk around uh, and get to this side of the bed and lay down and see if I can kind of show that, show that in camera. Like there's, there's plenty of room for me to be able to move, maneuver around. I can slide to the end of the bed and walk around uh, to get out if I need to go to the restroom at night. So that is something to note. Now, as far as getting to these cabinets with the queen bed, this one's gonna be easy to get to that's above. This far one is gonna be a little bit more difficult to get to. You're gonna to have to step up onto the bed to get to that. Now, one thing I do like about the queen bed model that you get and don't do not get in the twin bed model is gonna be um, these cabinets right here. A whole nother wardrobe. So this would be probably where my clothes go. And then you have really nice deep drawers underneath another so two deep two fairly deep drawers right there then there's a little bit of storage uh right right yonder something in there probably something to do with the plumbing for the bathroom area so i love this setup that you get with the queen bed uh 25 rb uh, that's a really cool thing now you have your ac and heating controls here so it's gonna do the ac the heat pump and the furnace are all controlled here of course you can turn just the fans on as well and you have one of your two 12 volt tvs right there now this is 12 volt so the inverted circuit that's hiding right there that is going to be available for uh anything else that you might want to use it for now this particular tv is on a uh, arm that will pull out be fine there it is so we can pull this out and then actually angle it more towards the bed so it can you know it's actually a little bit more usable as far as that goes and um on the front tv the one thing that they do that i'm not a super fan of i wish they would change is there's not a, a arm here so this tv just stays in place it's always in that fixed location again the inverted circuit right here on this 12 volt tv is going to be available for anything you might want to use it for as far as that thousand watts go uh, with the inverted circuit now the connections up there are going to be connected to to that tv so you are able to you know plug in a roku or a blue you know a apple tv or a bluetooth if you want to if you want to do that and then you do have some good storage underneath uh right there these pull out see that and then this bed does lift let me see if i can lift it with all of the stuff that's on it oh i can so it does lift and then you're gonna have all of this storage underneath the bed uh, like i put in the wrong way and then there's access out the front so you can pull that tub that you can pull this rubbermaid container out and that one out without having to lift the bed this one you'll have to lift the bed to get that one out but all of the storage underneath the bed's a ton of storage. And you can see that outside compartment is right there. And that's an insulated door. So you don't have to worry too much about, you know, heat uh, getting out. And there's a vent right there for your heating system. That's the furnace. That is a propane furnace. You have the electric heat pump and the system above you. And then the furnace itself is gonna be below. And that system is all basically built into this side of the coach. So you've got a furnace vent right there and then there'll be one that comes out right there and then one uh, going out into the bedroom area now as far as which windows open with the bedroom area this window is going to open that center window opens and then that window right there also opens as well you've got a reading light there there's another one right there and then it looks like they still install the reading light for when the bed is going north to south on the 27 foot now the 25 foots are all going to be east to west as well as the 23 foot with your mat with your bed set up the 27 foot and 28 uh, rb is where you're going to see the north to south uh, and then of course even when you get into the 30s uh, you'll see that as well hey if you've made it to this point of the video thank you for watching thank you for watching the whole video or at least skipping forward and watching the conclusion of the video uh, i do want to say then I appreciate everyone who has liked a video. I also appreciate everyone who has subscribed. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't done that already. And then leave a comment below with whether you like the rear bed, 
more or you like the front bed more? And then make sure you tell me why you like the rear bed or the front bed more. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment for that as well. All of my contact information is there in the description. If you're interested in getting a flying cloud for yourself, make sure you reach out as well. I hope you're having a great day. Let's talk soon. Live riveted. Goodbye.